What's up? It's your girl, Tally Spencer. Welcome back to another episode of Show Some Love Podcast. It's been a minute, y'all, but we're back. We're happy that you guys have been tuning in. And thank you again for the positive feedback on the episodes. We're glad you guys are loving it. Today, I have another special guest that joins the building. She goes by the name of Amaja Delon. Hi. (laughs) Thanks for having me. (laughs) I'm excited to have her, y'all. She doesn't really do too many interviews, podcasts, things like that. So um, this is going to be really good i'm super excited to get into today's topic which oh, yeah. is we're gonna be talking about some stuff today. <laughs> yes we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about it all i know it's a topic that everyone can relate to but we're gonna be talking about private versus public relationships okay and so nowadays you know with social media we have so many avenues and things that we can show off our person you know whether that's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, you know, all of the above. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to make your debut and be public on the gram. But today we're just kind of going to get into, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? Um, Is it something we're personal fans of doing? Have we ever done it? And the things that come with it. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and I just want to get right into it. I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are. I'm Imaja Delon. Um, I am a singer, influencer, choreographer, do the whole thing. But um, I was also part of the girl group Serati, so I'm solo now, and um, I'm independent, and I'm just out here thugging it. Okay, <laughs> doing doing everything, doing it all. And you guys may have known her from, like you said, from Serati. Mm-hmm. That's where I definitely first um, met you, like a long, long time ago. But um, you know, you're dancing. You've always kind of been in entertainment and in mm-hmm. music, and um, you know, you've been working your way up so it's been inspiring to see for real a long road (laughs) it's been a long road I'm sure there's been you know a lot of things that you've dealt with coming up and Mm -hmm. um I'm excited to hear you're independent now yeah that's a big deal a new uh avenue for me and I'm excited because I'm very hands-on um I just released a single called energy vampires so you guys go check that out right now it's a little r&b vibe um but it's like I am in control of my creativity. I have nobody stopping me now. And um, I'm collaborating with a lot of different people. Like, thank God for social media because mm-hmm. you can reach people that you would never even cross, right. you know, past. And um, everyone's so supportive. I'm getting so much love. And they're just ready for the music. And I'm eager, but I'm also perfectionist. So I want to make sure that it hits. Um, but luckily, like, I've had good feedback with everything okay. that I've been putting I'm out. excited for yeah. that. That's going to be I your play first. some. I, I want to hear it for yeah. sure. Um, but that's, you know, your first solo venture. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me, like, what's the sound behind that, behind um, the music? So like, um, I'm kind of, like, going with whatever I feel and what I can kind of get. You know, there's no budget here. <laughs> so I'm, like, uh, even I'm working towards, like, producing my own stuff, too. But um, I'm just, like, experimenting. But it's really just off of feeling and what I have access to. But I'm gathering a project. I'm touching different sounds. Like, I've always told people I want to do everything from country to rock to pop to mm-hmm. R&B, dance, all that stuff. So, you know... I've never really fit into one genre. I've always been like a jukebox because I've been raised off of so much stuff. Um, whether it was like Michael Jackson, my mom, like lately she's been playing like 80s country. And mm-hmm. like, I'm like, dang, they really <laughs> had some box back then. It was stories. So <laughs> right. I really wanted to tap into. And I feel like throughout this journey, I've kind of like went through a lot to where I can pull from those events and like put it into music. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. No, you have to experience life a little mm-hmm. bit in order to be able to really talk about it, sing mm-hmm. about it. And I know I was watching this Lauren Hill interview actually the other day and she said something similar you know they were like why did you never release um your second album and she was basically saying like I didn't have the inspiration like I didn't Mm -hmm. have the life experiences Mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to talk about in order to really you know put it out there so I definitely get it and I know you're young you know like (laughs) you have a lot of life a lot of life to experience Mm -hmm. for sure so what's the theme behind energy vampires so with that, it's like, okay. I like the name. Thank you. You know, it's. I feel like it's current within our uh, society. Like, we have a lot of people that will suck you dry from your energy. And I think with the, the industry, like, even going to all these parties, like, I went to start going to the club for the first time. Um, and it was fun, you know, but everyone was either, like, drunk or, like, high. And I'm, like, dancing. Everyone's like, why are you dancing so much? I'm like, that's what I do when I'm, when I'm around music. But um, you kind of start seeing people move. And, mm-hmm. and like trying to be seen with people or like lead you on like, yeah, we're going to do something and then, you know, get you to 
have all this energy and looking forward to something and it doesn't right. go out that certain way. So it's like you're seeing through the fake stuff and it's like I'll show up, but I know how to maneuver, but I'm keeping it cute. But right. I'm just tired of people, you know? Yeah. I'm tired of wasting my energy with people. I feel I, that. You know, so. I do. Um, yeah. Energy <laughs> vampire is a good way to describe how sometimes moving around in the industry can make mm -hmm. you feel. I feel like all throughout Grammy weekend, I was like ready to go <laughs> home, <laughs> ready to go home. Like it's fun, but at the same time, there's only so much you can take mm -hmm. because you're around so many people. Mm -hmm. You know, you're being introduced to people constantly and you, you have to talk about yourself, mm -hmm. which is great. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it can be very draining when mm -hmm. it's, you know, your line of work and, you know, you have to kind of be like this personality 24 7 mm -hmm. yeah so I mean you've done a great job at it you're somebody who's very public I would say on <laughs> Instagram yeah. and just in general um when did that like decision for you come I guess to really pursue music and entertainment and kind of just put yourself out there um so as you know a young child I was raised in a household around music family reunions, doing line dances, all that stuff, because I'm from the Midwest. So um, just having music as an outlet, like my dad was abusive, so what we would do is go ahead and play music and just dance it off and just kind of forget. And then anytime there was like BET Awards, Grammys, all that stuff, we would sit down and just watch it like it's a, a, an event. And so you, you see Michael Jackson, you see Chris Brown, you see Beyonce, you see um, Sierra and stuff like that. And you're like, I want to do that. And um, with social media on the rise, my mom's always been like hip. So she would mm -hmm. like film us and just throw it up. And it started creating traction to the point where it's like, hey, let's go to California and, and do the thing. You know, my mom saw the vision and, you know, we just love to do it. I mean, I know for me, it was something that I've always wanted to do at a young age. Right. So um, coming out here, we were doing school tours and stuff like that. And, you know, you're up front with these people and LA is a tough crowd, but if you can get them to like you at the end of the performance, then you can go anywhere. So mm -hmm. we were kind of like, we're doing it the organic way. Like yeah. people will talk crap about you on spot, laugh at you, boo tomatoes. <laughs> and, you know, you had to build up your, your self-esteem through that and confidence and that kind of like led to you know this point now because like social media is a different game people right. quick to talk behind the, the, the keyboard not and whatnot <laughs> they say that some of the meanest comments you'll ever read yeah. in your life yeah oh yeah they be going in on me but like you know it's that's what comes with it but I'm glad that I can like sit in a, a place of harmony with my family that keeps me safe and mm -hmm. grounded to where you know I might cry and be upset but then it's like okay I'm in a safe space I could just you know woo saw it out and just move forward and overcome that right so, right yeah. that's an important quality to have I'm glad you talked a little bit about having to do things like the quote-unquote old-fashioned way <laughs> when um before like getting that in person as well because mm -hmm. like you said it built character it helps you kind of realize like all right like this is what is gonna be and that doesn't go away no matter how talented how beautiful mm -hmm. how whatever there's always gonna be haters somewhere yeah you know if you ain't got no haters you ain't popping so <laughs> <In> that part <laughs> right um but you know i'm curious to kind of navigate into like that space of how that's um affected you as a person you know like how do you deal with it like neg naysayers or just things that you know you don't want to see or hear um See, I have a mouth on me. <laughs> I had to, like, learn how to, like, you know, there's time when to speak and there's time when there isn't. And sometimes you're just fed up. And I feel like a lot of people that are on social media, they kind of just get tired of it after a while. But I got to realize that I don't want to waste my energy. Those are energy vampires trying mm -hmm. to just, you know, because they're not focused on what they're doing. They want to take from you. And you spending your whole entire day responding to them is not going to help. But sometimes it'll release stress, okay? You know, you might say a little thing or two. But um, I just got to remind myself it comes with it. Like you said, if they're not hating on you, you're not you're not popping. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I'm like, well, then my, the, the latest content I've been doing, it must be popping. Because <laughs> everyone, wow, you're popping, popping. <laughs> but, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's good. And not everyone's going to like you. and But there's... There's people that are that are obsessed and they'll keep on going and they're gonna keep on going till you stop. But mm -hmm. I'm I can't stop. Won't right. stop. Right. Okay. Be can't gone. stop. Won't yeah. stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. I mean, like you said, it comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely something that everybody I kind of feel like navigates, especially when you're public. Mm -hmm. Like 
you have to put your art out there to be critiqued. And mm. that's probably one of the scariest things about being, you oh, know, yeah. a creator is mm-hmm. just like putting your art out there in the world mm-hmm. and not really knowing like how people are going to respond to it. I get nervous every single time I drop something. And it's like at the end of the day, it's your art. And but not everybody might receive it the same way. But you you're not going to know until you put it out and like going back to like the the old days where we were performing in front of people like we were recording off a snowball like no professional nothing you know doing videos and all that stuff but people just saw the hunger and the drive and the energy being put into it so um i just gotta like kind of tap into that every once in a while but i just get so nervous i've been like what if people don't like i just feel like there's a lot of weight you know what i'm saying it is it is you know being a new artist too and not sounding like everybody else so people might not understand it or they have to like kind of get into it but you know people have told me that they love my stuff you know Mm -hmm. so they're just waiting Mm -hmm. for more they're like we want the album give us the damn album (laughs) so i'm like okay i'm I'm, we're getting to it we're getting to it nah facts i mean you're gonna have people who love it always Mm -hmm. and like who really support you Mm -hmm. it's it's something for everybody out there so that part if you don't like me there's somebody else you right might like. <laughs> right 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 and and vice versa maybe this song you love maybe this song you don't yeah. and that's okay that's mm-hmm. the point of being an artist is mm-hmm. like you get to figure it out mm-hmm. um but you know with that being said opinions and be, like having this curated online presence do you feel like you think a lot about social media and like the way the, the content that you put out like what's your mentality behind uh, yeah. it yeah so i feel like i have a personal like beef with ai because all these algorithms and whatnot, because every single time I do something, it, it hits. And then, I mean, I'm shadow banned because I'm very vocal <laughs> about the stuff I talk about. But, like, even just that aspect of it, if you're not tending to what's hot in, like, what society or the 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 um, social media space, what they're trying to push, then they're going to keep you hush. Mm-hmm. But if you're doing something different, that's mm-hmm. not a part of what they're doing. It's like they don't know how to categorize mm-hmm. you, right. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, if you do makeup videos and all that, so they say, okay, we'll put that in the makeup lane. But if you're someone that does like three different things, it's like kind of hard to like put that in a lane. So it like, um, I feel like that's just the tough spot because i've always been on top of it like there's always been viral videos but just the algorithm is changing i'm looking through instagram's marketing thing and they they actually say hey we get to pick and choose what your followers would see. like to see and only like 10 percent or something yeah. of your audience actually sees your your content yeah and it's like why did why would why, why you don't even get these people a chance to even get to see me they follow me you probably have to like i've seen this post where it's like you have to like maybe like 10 posts like right away so they'll show up on your home page mm. but who's really gonna like right do all that they follow you and they want to see if they want to go snoop on your page they'll snoop on your page exactly. but they're they're hoping to see you on the home yeah page, yeah you know yeah, yeah. that's why i followed you so. no same same yeah. here i mean for me i just kind of that, like that's the way I find people I mm-hmm. guess nowadays is is very algorithm based like mm-hmm. I will scroll on the explore feed sometimes mm-hmm. and my algorithm is filled with like quotes mm-hmm. food <laughs> and vacation <laughs> and I love that for yeah. me because you know I got to see that to remind mm-hmm. myself sometimes but for example like when I'm looking for um, new artists mm-hmm. or trying to discover I guess like someone creative mm-hmm. um, I'll go to other people's pages and just lurk around until I find something <laughs> Like, I you don't gotta know. search for these people. You really do. You really do. It doesn't just <laughs> pop up on your on your feed. You mm-hmm. have to take some time out to really like go and find it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that being said, um, I guess all that to say, like being curated on social media helps to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. But you know, being consistent, putting mm-hmm. yourself out there, your authentic self is what people gravitate towards. It's what I gravitate towards when mm. I'm looking at people's profile and I'm like, hmm, like, what are the things here that they, like, mm-hmm. share with people? So, yeah, that's something I always think about. Yeah. And I would say, too, what's tough about it is, like, getting the courage to post something because I feel like we're in this bully culture. So it's like with social media, it's great, but then you might hit a swarm of people that'll catch you know, or you'll catch their eye, mm-hmm. but their intention of why they're on there might be different. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I noticed that, like, I've seen a lot of people, they'll see a post and they'll go straight to the comments. And it's like, what about the post? Right. Are, you, are you seeing what the post is about? Yeah. I want to see what everybody else is saying. <laughs> and it's, um, the comments be so entertaining. Yeah. But, and, you know, the comment is there for people to, like, you know, say their piece. But um, let's not let those be the 
ending like judgment for the mm-hmm. piece of content for mm-hmm. what it is so right yeah but that's you know that's what comes with it so you got to make sure i'm always thinking like okay let me check off the boxes so there's nothing they can say yeah but there's always there's something. always something yeah. man that's the one thing i would say related to our topic today <laughs> is kind of like i don't know if i would go public with anyone on instagram again um just the whole when do you go public with somebody mm-hmm. on instagram is that something smart to do in today's day and age? Like, do you want to have people as part of your relationship? What are your thoughts on, like, debuting relationships or people you're dating on the gram? Um, I would say if you're going to do it, you got to make sure that person's on the same wavelength as you. There's an understanding. There's trust. There's, you know, faithfulness. Because being on social media, there's a lot of temptation. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and then if you're at a high caliber when it comes to, like, people knowing you, you also got to keep that in mind that people are going to say stuff. But I feel like if you're going to be in a relationship, you got to be mature anyway. So, like, not letting that stuff phase you. But um, it just all depends on if that's what you want people to see, too, because I'm a very private person. Yeah, no, same. Yeah. And And my shit is very, very curated. Like, you will not know what is going on in my love life based on my Twitter or my Instagram. Yeah. Like, I'll be tweeting things that are so irrelevant. And meanwhile, (laughs) meanwhile, we chilling at dinner or whatever the case. And they have no clue. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's none of their business. I I mean, that way. Yeah, I do. I feel like when you do get public, you bring in so many, um, so much room for opinions Mm -hmm. and so many people that kind of have something to say about your relationship and it can affect you, you know? So who do I think of when I think of like super public relationships? Blueface and Krishan. (laughs) What a public. (laughs) They are in the most public relationship I can think of. It feels like we're in their text messages with them. See, but that's for everybody that wants to be in their text message. Like, you know, if it comes on the timeline, you'll just, you'll see it. But it's like, there are people that'll go down the rabbit hole and like get deep (laughs) into it. But, you know, I mean, they kind of, it's not really hard to see what's really going on. So, I mean... That's that's what they that's what they're on. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, until they're like, hey, we're going off social media, then it's it's out there. You're mm-hmm. telling people. I would say the difference between that is like, okay, let's say um, it's um it's a Valentine's Day post. Right. I'm posting my boo for Valentine's Day. I'll maybe post his glass of wine with his <laughs> pinky finger in the corner. <laughs> That will be my, my hard lunch. Like a little, <laughs> just a little bit, a little razzle dazzle here. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a, not too much. Because, so as background, you know, I was in a public relationship mm-hmm. at one point. Instagram has one public relationship out of me mm-hmm. so far. Um, we were in a relationship for three years and we went public like the first month Mm -hmm. he asked me to be his girlfriend and I was just like that's where they get you I know they ask you first (laughs) I know but it was cute it was like we had a really cute picture Mm -hmm. I had a really dope caption and I'm like all right like bet this was like Instagram 2015 16 Mm -hmm. whatever so I feel like it was a little different back then oh yeah I feel like you could do that like it was okay like it was kind of almost expected Mm -hmm. because you had the Facebook announcement that was like when you're in a relationship with somebody <laughs> right where and then you could tag them and then it slowly moved to instagram where it was like posting a picture with somebody mm-hmm. was like the oh my gosh moment yeah. and it was just regular i'm like you know this person's in my life we're with each other all the time we have pictures together you're just gonna be in the recap mm-hmm. but i then once we broke up it's like damn i have all these pictures with you in it and now i have to delete 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 mm-hmm. oh i got all these memories the archive coming up so that's why I feel like I I don't know if I would do it ever again. Yeah, to it's be too honest. much energy. It's yeah. too much energy. And then it's like you said, it's like, why am I po- doing all this posting if, if, if it's not going to work out? And I got all this stuff I got to delete, re, re-see certain things, relive certain moments. Right, so, right. Like, I've never, I've never been even a type to take pictures with people. Like, because I already, like, I've always reset my mind, like, okay. If this doesn't work out, there's nothing you have to look back on. You didn't take no pictures, nothing. It's just, okay, you can move forward. But, like, uh, my last relationship, I was very, like, spontaneous. I'm like, let me do opposite of what I've been doing. Let me, let me, uh, I mean, I wanted to meet somebody that in person Mm -hmm. and, like, no, no social media stuff. So I thought it was, like, Okay, the boxes are checking. And it's, God wants this for me. It's it's in the he car. He didn't have a social media. Him? Oh no, no, he did. Oh, okay, but I we didn't meet via okay, social media. Okay. We met in person at the 
Rock Nation, Grammy mm-hmm, Fresh. Mm-hmm. I met my mom and everything. I wasn't really pressed to like, I was I was here because I was like, we at the brunch. All right, right let's get right. it popping. Big moment. <laughs> but um, I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. You know, if stuff could, you know, feels right, you know, let's move forward. And, you know, asked me on a date, went on the date. It's crazy around this time, Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, Rock Nation just happened. Yeah, recently. it's crazy. So um, we were, I was like, okay, this is cool. This is a vibe. Asked me, like, what are we doing? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What are we doing? And okay, so you're asked to be boyfriend, girlfriend. Cool. Okay, cool. And as soon as I got the green light, I'm like, I'm posting a picture. We're together. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I would never do that. I would never, ever do that because you don't know people's like back situation. You don't think they tied any loose ends, none of that. Not facts. And I was like, oh, let me just try something different. And it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. But then you start getting DMs and stuff like that from other people. And right. It just gets drama. So like, it messes up things. Yeah. I would take the pinky. <laughs> like you said, just <laughs> That's a my debut. wine. You've mentioned that you went public on the gram before. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you feel like are things that are needed in order for you to like go public with somebody today? Would you ever do it? And <laughs> 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 what boxes does he got to check? Um, I feel like you got to like be with. A man, see, a man, not a boy, not a guy, a man, that you have kind of saw his habits and everything. It's, I give it like the, I say past the six month, because three month they keep it up, and then this, some of them can go for six months pretending to be somebody that they're not. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like after that, maybe if you want a time frame, um, but I mean, I know for me, I, I want to be with somebody that, gets it Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there's no funny games like if we're on social media I shouldn't even phase you because you're not even like tapped into all that like if we're together we're together you know if you want to post you can if we if we don't want to post like sometimes people have like a theme for their for their brand and whatnot and from my last relationship I don't think that was the case I mean I got Mm -hmm. posted like twice but Mm -hmm. people was on my my face (laughs) I'm like he don't post you and I'm I'm like I don't care like I'm not worried about about that yeah (laughs) um but when I did the whole like hard launch Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. I guess people were getting hit up a lot and I was like oh did I do something bad because I'll take it down you know what I'm saying but I'm thinking like okay once you say we together we together we together, we together, <laughs> right, and right. I'm like, okay, boom, and the picture was cute, it was a little Disneyland, little, yeah, 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 you know? okay, um, but, um, so you wouldn't do it again, no, okay, no, <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like it's just, I feel like I, like, everyone kind of has to go through that, like, one social media, like, relationship thing, like, where mm-hmm. they try and post it, one sometimes it works for people, but I just, like, the less people in my business, mm-hmm. and, you know, not saying that, just because I post somebody, okay, y'all just supposed to be in everyone's business. It's just that post that we want to share. Not saying you go look at what that person's doing all night. Oh, so he was at the club. And what if they were like, hey, you're out with your boys and I'm chilling at home type thing. Right. And y'all are making certain narratives. Yeah. There's just a lot of different cause a elements. lot of stress to it, too. Yeah. For sure. So would you, would you ever date somebody, I guess, who doesn't fit, like, your Instagram aesthetic? Like... I know that's a weird question, but... No, it's a good question. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Like, fitting the Instagram aesthetic in terms of, does he have to have followers? Does he have to be verified? Like, do, do those things matter? No. Um, I actually want would want somebody far away from the aesthetic. Okay. Like, chop down some wood, you know? <laughs> <laughs> know the constitution. Post it next to the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the you know, if, if he's a hard worker, you will built muscle off of doing some real manly labor, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like I, I want to actually have like if you know music, good music, that's a plus. You know, what I'm saying if you're not like if you're listening to like James Brown or Temptations or like classical, whatever, that's yeah. dope. we can we can talk about it. But my vibes, my vibe and your vibes, your vibe and. You know, if you have like a, I'm not looking for someone to match an aesthetic. I mean, it's cute. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know. You. I just feel like it's, I don't know. It's not real at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's so funny because I, I know people have like two sides to the spectrum, you know, where it's like, if your social media page looks a certain way, pe- some people won't even give you a chance. Like I have homegirls who are like, why did you see posing like this? Like, why is this his caption? Oh, he uses too many emojis. That's a turn off. What? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, you know what? There's been like a lot of debates or not even debates. It's just like a topic that the women and younger 
females in our society and our generation are so worried about social media like yeah when this great they just shut down the internet what you gonna do like what else are you gonna have like what are you what are you gonna share yeah because like, or- if you think about it they grew up with social media yeah you know and like to a certain extent we did too but the younger generation who like never experienced getting their first phone at 12 13 mm-hmm. years old um grew up you know in front of tiktok in mm-hmm. front of instagram and kind of like realizing okay maybe I don't have to go on si- go outside yeah. we had a whole two years of the pandemic where mm-hmm. things were virtual you know my sister I would say is a good example of that like she just got used to everything being online she mm-hmm. just graduated high school you know first two years of college were online so they already don't have that experience mm-hmm. of like being able to meet people in person and being able to um, like naturally have conversations at bars or wherever the case mm-hmm. you wearing a mask when you go yeah. out like there's no even attraction <laughs> So um, I felt like, you know, a lot of times people were kind of relying on your social media presence, your bio. What do your pictures kind of say about you in order to really get to know somebody, Mm -hmm. which is fair in this day and age. I feel like, you know, sometimes social media can say a lot about Mm -hmm. who you are, what your interests are, but only when it's like like true to yourself and that's something that nobody will ever know like what's really true to you yeah they be, they be we be finding out what people are really into by their likes yeah on, on twitter <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> you're like oh that's how you get out <laughs> <laughs> no for real for real yeah. um before we go into this next one let's see <laughs> oh um i guess when it comes to like relationships that uh can look like too curated or too perfect Mm -hmm. um do you feel like that can kind of be the case with social media too or what's your thoughts on like the curation of when people do decide to post each other I think in like our realm like the industry and stuff like that I feel like that is important for people's brand you know because that's how they make their money or that's what they sold to the public as their relationship. And I get that. I, I feel like social media, it really is just business for me. Because mm-hmm. um, when I want to search for something or find something that's genuine, I want to find it in person and, like, take my time with it, not basing it off of, like, a platform. Um, but, yeah, I think it's important for people that are making money, yeah, mm-hmm, off mm-hmm, of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but Party and Offset, they just got their McDonald's uh, see. Happy Meal we're, deal. We're together. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. Yeah, no, and there's a lot of criticism on, on people on social media, too, because, like, one thing, I think, like, with, you know, the Kevin Hart thing, he ended up making a whole special about it, but it's, like, you got to be that creative to kind of like turn something like that that's personal and mm-hmm, public mm-hmm. into something crazy and great. But not everyone is like that. So it's like you're kind of left with that stain, you know, on social media and because that stuff doesn't go anywhere. Right. So I think it's a lot of pressure. That's why I wouldn't wouldn't want to do it unless that person is just cool and like there is no jealousy like every. Just maturity, you yeah, know, yeah. on the same vibe. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's with everything. I mean, even like friendships, I would mm-hmm. say, too, because there's people, I guess, who, you know, we've maybe we're friends in high school with and then don't talk anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, or maybe something happened like a fallout. And now I got to delete the pictures and go back because, like you said, sometimes they can leave like a stain mm-hmm. on your brand or your memories or the things that are just on your page. Um, I know, you know, you've dealt with your fair share of just having to like end relationships (laughs) and not be involved with certain situations anymore. Can you talk like a little bit about, I guess, what that process has been like for you and kind of just growing into like your new self? It's a big fat stain that's not trying to come out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, and then it's deeper because it's family. It's not like some stranger out the street and everything. So um, like even with just certain posts on like there's just certain memories that people need to know and see oh this is where it came from or mm-hmm. like you know a lot everyone's wearing crocs now but we was out here dancing in crocs going right, viral right. and like people were talking about that but that like i'm not gonna take that away like that was you know somebody's moment and whatnot i know when i was doing videos it was very genuine energy but you know now trans transitioning through that like you know, it's not that anymore. Like that chapter is closed. Mm-hmm. You're a writer. You know, we have a song called "That's What She'd Say." Mm-hmm. This chapter is closed. Okay. <laughs> okay. But um, you know, just you. 
that's what comes with it and yeah. like it's something big like that it's 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 hard dealing with it every day you know there's always people saying something i wanted a different outcome too yeah. you know i wanted a better positive everything but sometimes we don't get that type of happy ending but what we can do is move forward and um like that's why there's new pictures and new memories and new moments because this is what i'm doing now i'm mm-hmm. like i'm not there anymore so let's all get out of that that uh yeah. dimension we're yeah. in a new one okay okay <laughs> what what is your guys's relationship like are you still cool with your, your no i don't now? talk i don't talk to nobody okay you know it's just me i i got two younger siblings you know what i'm saying and i'm trying to give them the best of me and be there for them and they've been the biggest support system my mom my stepdad as well and it's just you know you get older like after you turn 18 you're an adult you get to do whatever you want mm-hmm. so like People can't keep you in a certain spot, you know, and just because we're family doesn't mean that our lives are going to be on the same path, right. you know. So yeah. um, my thing is just like respect and and there could have been certain ways where we could just, you know, move forward our lives mm-hmm. a different way. Yeah, I was going to ask, what do you feel like um, should have been or could have been done differently, I guess, to kind of see the outcome that you wanted? Like, what was the vision, you know, that you had versus the way that it turned out? And what do you feel like could have went different? I feel like there was a lot of, like, missing puzzle pieces to what was going on and what transpired. And the truth had to come out for you to kind of figure out what was going on at that moment. Because, you know, we were doing brunches, Savage X Fenty. Like, I was tunnel vision, work, work, work. And so I'm not picking up. Now I can see everything in the room. But when you're grinding and focusing, there was already so much put on top of Sarati like people weren't trying to like let us be great Mm -hmm. so I had to fight that and keep everything together but um you know it's just wild like you don't see through other people's eyes you can only see what you see right and you know people like try to make edits about me saying that I'm like you know like have Destiny's Child Beyonce being a diva for like five minutes Mm -hmm. there's videos of me and I'm like yo do you understand that I was editing all these videos I had to deal with attitudes I had to like come up with concepts and like knock stuff out. I was really serious about this stuff and you get irritating when you're not getting or irritated when you're not getting respected. And then, then people go on and make their own narratives when I've just been trying to move forward. But, um, it's just a discussion and being mature and not lying and saying, Hey, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. Like, Hey, you know, Oh, what else do you want to do? Got conversations. Like, do you want, do you want to go to hair school? Do you, do you want to go to college? Like what do we do? We could do, we can, Hey, Hey, Sire, you want to, um, work out? I'll film all your workout videos. I was trying to be the support supportive yeah, person yeah. hey if you don't want to do this because I want to do this and it's not fair that I have to sit here and um struggle and fight people that don't want to do what the same thing I'm doing you don't got to do what I'm doing like mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing is popping and people like it we can all be a part of it like we we're supposed to do a, um a Facebook reality show um before Sire quit and um her energy was just different and even the people that we're meeting with they're like oh it seems like she doesn't want to do it mm, so many people tell. talking about she don't want to do it. you yeah. see you could tell right they could tell yeah <laughs> they, they could tell like so it's like well what are we doing Let, let's just be sisters and lit and have fun and yeah. and and just and, and break off on the show and be like hey we're doing this is our new chapter this is mm-hmm. the elevation it didn't work out with the girl group but Cyrus is going to do this, or Jania is going to do this, and Imaj is going to do this, and we could be cool. Like, look at the Kardashians, right? They got crazy stuff going on, but they all have their own different avenues, right. but they still support each other. And yeah. it's like, why couldn't At least publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like, at least you're going to do stuff, like, and we could, all that could have been handled if people just would have been honest and had a conversation. No one was ever forced to do nothing they didn't want to do. And people were saying, yeah, I want to do it. Do you want to do it? Yeah, I want to do it. Why would you tell somebody you want to do it if you don't mm-hmm, want to do it? Mm-hmm. Now we're in now we're in sessions and people are I had to make up excuses like, oh, she doesn't feel good, or I'm sorry, you know, she had a long day, da 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 da. Or I don't like this song or crying, da da da. And I'm like, man, I could have knocked this song out in two hours, we would have been done. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, and it's like, you know, I've already done, like, the podcast with my mom and stuff like that, and, you know, it's family. Like, you're not going to argue with your sisters. Do you have siblings? I do. I yeah. have three sisters, too, yeah, so, they're, so all, they're all younger. Oh, that's good, so mm-hmm. you can lead them in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> but now I feel you. I mean, because with, yeah. with families, and it's not always, like, 
easy breezy beautiful you no, know it's not, girl. <laughs> it's not that it's not what people make it out to see so yeah. i get it but i think um there's a lot of people who definitely wanted to see y'all win together i wanted it you know? <laughs> we could have been the next tlc dusty show but people was not on the same you got to be on the same wavelength you do like, you all have to want it equally yeah. and you all have to kind of put things aside to to see it because you see how it is now in the industry like they'll try and put people against each other and, and the worst thing is it's like it's people you don't already know no. Yeah. So at least when you have your family, it's like, okay, like we, we got to go back to what our values are, yeah. what we believe in and what we want ultimately. Um, I know. So you are pretty much, you're the active member only of it. Well, I mean, Sarati's done. Okay. I still have the page because that's my page. I've had a conversation with Sire, but it's like, and she's like, yo, you can have it. I release you. And I was like, I didn't know I was in shackles and chains, mm -hmm. but um, okay, cool. So I'm going to post them keep posting because that's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, it's, it's either me or my mom that were, like, posting and, and all that stuff. You know, we were giving the content to the people. That was the whole, you know, goal for Serati is to, you know, inspire and, you know, make people – feel like hey you can do it because we're fighting through you know whatever you know the industry it's a bunch exactly. of crazy people out there and you know we're doing it the organic way hustling you know never had like any big team or whatever and we're just getting it on our own so you know a lot of people would tell me like you your your fight like even you're still fighting it pushes me to like keep on going mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. there's times where i'm like i don't want to do this no more Man. my happiness is more in this i'm stressing out like shoot even with this past situation with the with jason derulo i i was getting so tired and couldn't sleep and like was, what happened with jason derulo oh i mean i was, I was signed to him but okay. um you know like obviously i'm not there no more but it was creating hostile work environments this dude was yelling at me like mm, crazy and, and then neglecting come to find out you got bbc raid uh a show where he's signing new artists and we got a whole artist here right, right. we're about y'all telling me that we can put out a single everything ready to go and they you know your budget's open your budget's open okay let's what's the budget you know what i'm saying you're 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 worried about the wrong thing so i'm not i'm not supposed to worry about the money that's supposed to fund my project yeah yeah so like you know i i, I did it again work my butt off to get signed again and you know even the, the meeting i had um this girl walks in and she's like oh how'd you get here and I'm like, oh, you know, Jason Rulo knew me from the group. And, she, mm -hmm. and then I was like, what about you? She's like, oh, he's trying to be on some fuck shit. And I'm like, dang, <laughs> so that's how you got here. Like, Damn. you know what I'm saying? It's easy to oh. go ahead and do that and be, get in a room. Yeah. I'm over here, blood, sweat, and tears. Right. And then some girl gets to walk up in here because she's just out here. I'm not doing that. So, you know, like, imagine trying to just stay focused the whole entire time. You're in an industry full of wolves and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know... I got stress disorder now. Like, I'm stressed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, people want to quit. Like, it's just tired. No, nah, no, nah, for real. That is crazy to hear, actually. But it happens so often. And I think one thing, you know, that has benefited you just from being so public is that people literally saw you, you know, grow up. They saw the work that you put in from the early days. And we got to see, you know, the formation of the group to people leaving the group to it being what it is now to you being the hustler that you are. So, you know, I, overall, I'm happy that you have been public Thanks. with that journey because I think it's important for people to just see the story and feel like, you know, they know who you are. And um, when you talk about certain experiences and talk about like what you stand for um it resonates with people you know because i think people just need to see more of that like this is the hustler and this is what happened this is what is going on now so i'm honestly excited for you and what Thanks. you have planned i know I'm, I'm very transparent i'm like this is what it is like it's not easy like i this is all that i'm doing and i appreciate you having me on here mm -hmm. and let me you know speak on it because a lot of people have their own thoughts yeah. on the situation and it's just like it's not easy being a female in the industry by yourself really trying to hustle and get it and yeah, that's all I've been doing like I don't have no beef with nobody like yeah you have issues with your siblings but everyone has issues with their siblings and like I try not to talk about nothing but when people ask me I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest it's part of your story. yeah it, it is. is what it is like you know, it like is. we got we got to see Michael Jackson's story on the American Dream. We didn't mm -hmm. know all that stuff was mm -hmm. going on. But imagine they had social media back in the day. No, we would have exactly. known no, so much. There would have been so much more tea out there. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> Man. But I mean, it relates to our topic today of just being public and private on social media relationships, whether that's, you know, a significant other or whether it's your family. You know, I think it all kind of plays a role in perception and curation. And ultimately, it's part of the part of the story. So, um, 
yeah, I appreciate you for coming Thanks on the pod and sharing your story with us. Before we go, is there anything that you want to let us know? We should be on the lookout from you this year. Um, I have a song that's supposed to release on the 15th, maybe. I'm, I'm really just going out there and doing it. It's called Espionage. I'm trying to go shoot the music video real quick, but um, I'm just experimenting and having fun and doing stuff, but the project's coming on the way. I'm literally like 50% done. I'm engineering it. I'm, I'm writing it. I'm, I'm working with different producers. So this is just all like mm-hmm. gorilla, Imaja, okay. about to get it. So we're, we're figuring it out, working out the kinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, one thing I've always admired, <laughs> um, uh, I can't speak, admired about you is that you've been consistent. So, Thank you. you know, that it really goes a long way. <laughs> Don't stop. I love to see it. You're doing a great job, you know, as an independent woman, just Thank you. solo navigating in the industry i get it so thank you again amaja we'll be on the lookout for that um it's a great topic on show some love pod i hope you guys enjoyed it let us know if you would ever make your public debut on the gram okay uh whether that's with family do you post your family whether that's your significant other your girl your man let us know what you think about that and um we'll see you guys next time on show some love thank you to our special guests thanks for having me (laughs) (laughs) i'm your host Sally spencer this amaja and we'll (laughs) We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.